Hey, everybody, it's me, Mr. Auerbach, and here I am coming to you from Kentucky, the Southern household, and uh, I'm uh, really sorry, but I'm not going to be able to actually meet with you uh, IRL today because uh, I'm taking my brother to get his uh, vaccine shot at 210 exactly, so uh, it ain't going to work out for us, but I do have a little bit of a lesson that I want to lay on you. So listen, we are uh, talking about the fossil fuels chapter that I am assigning for you. There's a reading uh, to read sections 13.1 and 13.2 up to the end of the crude oil section. So when it gets to, is natural gas a good answer? You can stop there. So it's several pages of reading in the textbook, but some of it you can scan. Uh, let's take a look. Actually, I'll tell you what, I've got the I think, yes. Uh, in just a second, we're going to come back to this about the uh, the petroleum distillation. But uh, just really quickly, um, here's the first. So I do want you to read what is net energy and why is important. Why this, is it important? And we're going to talk about that in another uh, little broadcast I'm going to do in just a minute. But um, then... Uh, advantages and disadvantages of using fossil fuels is 13.2 and I'll have you read that basically through here until you get to is natural gas a cleaner fossil fuel so all right here is what I want to talk about then which is the distillation of petroleum because this is something you should understand petroleum is a mixture of all sorts of things and when I say a mixture let me stop the share and show you what I'm talking about it's a mixture of hydrocarbons. This is the simplest hydrocarbon because it's made of hydrogen and carbon. And you may remember that carbon bonds with four things covalently. Uh, if we need to go back over that, we will. But let's just assume that you all still have that. You all took chemistry. Carbon uh, covalently bonds to four hydrogens and is the simplest hydrocarbon. It combusts. You can use it for fuel uh, and it releases a, a lot of energy as molecules go. Um, and there's no oxygen in it, which is why it's just called a hydrocarbon. Okay, so here is, uh, is this decane? No, I think it's nonane because I had to steal the 10th one for this. I only brought, can you believe I brought molecule balls down with me on an airplane? You should have heard the sound of my, uh, of my, uh, my luggage sounded like this. Yeah, that's me traveling. Anyway, this is decane. And so I, want, I didn't put all the hydrogens on here because honestly, uh, I don't have time for all this. So, uh, but which of these do you think has a higher boiling point, right? The little one with one carbon atom and four hydrogens or this one, uh, which actually would have a 10th carbon on here and would have all those hydrogen atoms. Which do you think takes more energy to get to actually boil away? Where I think it's obvious, right? This one takes a lot more energy to uh, to melt. Uh, this would actually be a liquid at room temperature. Let's let's talk about this. So uh, one, two, three, and four are ooh, ooh, are not liquids at room temperature. They're gases at room temperature. That's methane, ethane, propane, and butane. One, two, three, four. Propane is three carbons, right? And so that is still whew, uh, a gas at room temperature. So this, and then once you get into the ones that are five, five is close, but five is pentane, and that will be a uh, liquid at room temperature. And your gasolines are generally mixtures between five and eight, with eight being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octane, right? You've heard of that. Anyway, that's part of the mixture. Gasoline is a mixture of those ones that are good uh, liquids at room temperature. And then diesel is much bigger. Diesel is actually, I think, 12 to 15 carbon atoms. And so that's why you need a different ignition for your diesel car. You need ignition coils because they get hotter than your spark plugs. Spark plugs won't start diesel fuel because just the same as it has a higher boiling point, it also has a higher ignition point. It's harder to ignite. It's got a lot more fuel power once it does. But anyway, this is what, so the point is, this is what hydrocarbons are like. And things like uh, tar, tar is 50 carbons long. 
paraffin wax, which is really solid at room temperature, that's about 25 carbons long. And so anyway, here's the thing. The important part that I want you to focus on in learning about petroleum is I really want you to understand this idea of how that concept of boiling point is used to separate this, this mixture out, which is different all over the world. Um, there's uh, mixtures of different size hydrocarbons. There's also acids and ammonia and all these other things that come out that have to be, you know, the purification process is really extensive because that nice clear liquid that, that comes out of the gas tank is nothing like the mixture that comes out of the ground. And it's different in every place. As you're going to see later in the unit, uh, heavy oils like Venezuela has very heavy oil and it's much harder to process. Whereas Saudi Arabia has what's called sweet crude, which is because it's very easy to process. Now, let's, let's just look at this, okay? You see this column and you see that there's a furnace and what happens is uh, the, let me actually go to, oh, wrong one. This is the same thing as what you see over there. And what you have is your crude oil mixture here, which has basically all of these things like C1 is methane, like I just showed you. C12 uh, would be diesel or, or dodecane, it's called. And, and then C25 is like paraffin, they're all in there. And so they all get heated up to a wicked high temperature that, that vaporizes most of them. The ones that don't vaporize, are going to be your tars and things like that. And they'll just drop down to the bottom here and they get piped out to a different part of the refinery. You've seen refinery complexes. They're, they're these giant sets of towers connected by pipes. And the thing is that each has a different temperature range. And so the stuff that won't boil at these temperatures is put into a different system of the, let's say greater than uh, 20 carbons, C20, I should have written like I did up there. And then anyway, as they get, as they, as the, they come in here, the, the low temperature ones just liquid on out and all the rest of them are vaporized. So, so except for your, maybe your C25, that's going to end up over here, but all the rest of them are going to go up. Now the lightest ones, less than C5, they're, they're going to go, have to go through a different purification process. So they all make their way through here and they're going to end up going to a different process, which will cool them down much more, as you can imagine, and then separate those out. That's a very energy intensive process in and of itself. And then the rest of them, what happens is that the, the temperatures here, and I'm just going to estimate uh, 200 uh, degrees, uh, 150 degrees, it's getting cooler as you go up, right? That makes sense. And the thing is, 100 degrees and so forth, uh, let's say 50. And I don't know what, I probably painted myself into a corner here. I, I doubt, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to put anything there. The point is that as these things go up, they're going to reach their actual vaporization point, except in reverse, right? Eventually they'll get to a place where it's, it's cool enough. Oh, wrong one it's cool enough that they will, they're a vapor, they're a vapor, Whoa, they reach a temperature that's cool enough and they're gonna precipitate out as a liquid. How do I draw that for you? I'll make brown goo. So, so some of this brown goo is gonna sit here. That's not brown. So this will sit here in a little bin. They have these they have these catchment bins that will catch these things. And so maybe C7 is going to make it farther up here, and it's gonna it's gonna reach its sort of vaporization point, uh, its condensation point, and it'll settle in here. And maybe that's like a uh, a lighter. Oh come on now, Let's make this harder for me. I literally don't know what just happened to see. Oh, I messed everything up. I just put C7 there. Okay, sorry. C7 goes here and it comes out. Oh, everything's going wrong now. It's okay. I'll be okay. The point is, so C7 gets to where it's 
condensation point is and it turns back into a liquid instead of a gas and it's caught there and then later on these all get pumped out to to their own places to be further purified and then we still have c6 which is going up the column as a vapor as a vapor as a vapor still too hot still too hot still too hot then it gets here and it's like oh and it condenses back into a liquid as well and maybe this is a different liquid and, and we'll put that there and so these are, are going to go up and then the rest of them will go up so hopefully you understand that it's a sorting process that happens by boiling point. And if I go back to the original share here, if I can find that, you can see here what, what's going on. So your uh, lightest things, the gases go right out the top, the heaviest things like asphalt, tar go out the bottom, greases, wax, naphtha is a solvent. Uh, anyway, you can see all these things and, and you can be sure that as you go up, they're lighter and lighter things, right? Aviation fuel is heavier than gasoline, heating oil is heavier than aviation fuel, diesel oil is the heaviest. Uh, and then you get into your things that really don't uh, stay liquid very easily. So that's how petroleum distillation works. I think it's important to know because we're going to be talking about the different mixtures and different types of oils right in this chapter. It's important for you to understand the difference between heavy oils uh, like the tar sands, folks. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So you can pump crude oil out of the ground in Saudi Arabia because they have that nice sweet crude that's easy to put on boats. It's easy to put in pipelines. It's easy to do whatever. But in Canada, they have the tar sands, which you'll read about. I don't have a picture to show you. I'm sorry. But that is solid in the, the, the way that you form it. You don't pump it at all. You have to heat it up with steam to melt it so you can pump it out. Whole different thing. Much heavier. So that's the idea. First thing I wanted you to understand. Hope you uh, have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you later.